Hey there, aspiring comedians and comedians. Welcome to Greg Dean's stand-up comedy classes. This is the free seminar. My level one workshops and classes, okay? They're available in person uh, in Santa Monica and on Zoom, live teaching with that as well. How to build a routine. Probably the very first thing you really need to know when you get into stand-up comedy. There are three levels to my particular classes. The first one, is the one I'm talking about here, which is level one, how to build a routine. Very important. That's really the first step because you're not going to feel good going to the open mic until you kind of have something to do and feel good and uh, confident about that routine to get up in front of people and take a shot at it. Once you go through this class, everyone is required, prerequisite. Once you finish this class, you go right into my level two classes, which is writing an actual show and performing at the improv. Woohoo, man, I'm telling you, that's really powerful. Go through that a few times till you start to really get some material. Level three is then we start giving you some specialized training, how to be an MC and how to do crowd work. Right now, what we're talking about is level one, how to build a routine. Here are some of the things that my students are saying about my classes. Greg teaches you how to actually write a joke. I mean, you go to an open mic and, and no one there knows how what a joke is. And then you go there and you do, and then you tell one, and you actually get laughs, unlike most other people. Well, Greg was my first stand-up class ever. I never would have done it if it wasn't for him. You help me kind of dive deep into what makes me funny, and then help me bring that out. It makes me also feel more safe to try new things and take more risks. This is the biggest shortcut, okay, I'm talking about years of shortcut into learning and through the process. Well, there you go, a few of my students talking about what they've learned and the results that they got. The last one that talked about how this is a shortcut, he became a paid headliner within one year and three months of taking the class you are looking at right now. Really, that quickly. Next is uh, my books. My main book is Step by Step to Stand-Up Comedy. I put it out in uh, 2000 and then updated it in 2018. You can get it in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. There's also my workbooks. One is how to write jokes, how to improve jokes and routines, how to remember jokes naturally, how to be a funnier performer. And the last one's how to get the experience. So you can go out and become a professional comedian, which I think is the goal. Developing the fundamentals. When I began in 1982, a long time ago, there were no real no fundamentals out there. You can get really get lost or you can go right for the sunshine here which is the only shortcut to mastering anything difficult and complex is learning and practicing the fundamentals the class itself teaches a series of very specific things you will learn and practice the techniques and skills needed to write organize and perform a stand-up comedy routine that's what it's about i have a very specific focus i've got a lot of stuff to teach what i'm teaching in this class is focused very much on this as i will show you right now first of all you're going to learn joke structure not a uh, joke structure you'll find on youtube my joke structure greg dean's joke structure okay you're going to learn to uh, write jokes Edit and fix jokes. Tell funny stories. There's a lot of fundamentals people don't realize that are really necessary for telling funny stories. Because you can do a lot of things that mess up a very funny story and make a funny story unfunny. Assembling a routine seems obvious, but there's a lot of technique behind that as well. Managing your stage fright. Yes, there are things that once you learn them and know how to do them, the stage fright becomes more minimal. You'll perform with confidence and have a routine, have a routine at the end of this, and you'll know how you built it. You're gonna learn all of these things that lead you to performing with confidence and having a routine at the end. How it all started in 1982, back to developing the fundamentals in 1982, there were almost no fundamentals. Am I gonna teach people joke writing if I, if I don't even know what a joke is? That was the question, what is a joke? And the answer took me 17 years to come up with a complete model. It come in bits and pieces for many years. But I have to tell you, it's a lot of work and a lot of reading, a lot of study and a lot of listening, a lot of looking at a lot of jokes and a lot of performers, maybe thousands. Yeah, I'd say thousands. From there, I had to do the invention of joke structure. First of all, I had to answer a question, what is a joke? And then I had to kind of find a way to communicate it to people. I could kind of understand it, but then there were mechanisms in it that, that no one had ever identified and they didn't have names. I coined the phrase joke structure to explain the mechanisms that connected 
the setup and the punch or the first part of the joke and the second part of the joke. That's what joke structure is in my world. It's the, it's the mechanisms between the setup and the punch, not setup and punch. They're just the way we go about expressing one-liners. That's no different than saying cartoon or sitcom, or sketch. They're all just ways of expressing humor. These are the definitions of these three mechanisms. You really have to understand this. At the center of all jokes, there's always one thing with two meanings. At the center of all jokes on this planet that have ever been and ever will be, there's one thing with two meanings or interpretations. Please do not believe me, be a skeptic. Because if you're a skeptic, you'll do some research into this and find out that I'm right. Here's the first thing is uh, one thing with two meaning. The setup actually gives you the expected meaning. One thing with two meanings, and that's how you misdirect an audience. They accept the expected meaning. In the punch, there is a mechanism there, which is the unexpected meaning. That's what creates the surprise. A lot of people talk about that. Comedy teachers talk about that, like that's some new information that came from Socrates and Aristotle. Keep these in mind because I go along, you're going to start to see how this relates to so many things. When you learn joke structure, first of all, you learn how to identify jokes. Identifying jokes, very important. Where the hell is the joke? People bring me uh, stuff all the time in private, especially, and they'll have notebooks and notebooks. And I'll say, well, let's work on one. They'll take out a full page. And I'll say, well, it's only got one joke because there's only one time. Do you have one thing with two and two meanings in there? And then I'll help them shorten the joke. And I say, is that the joke you were trying to say? And they went, oh yeah, that's exactly it. Yet they wrote and wrote because they didn't know where the joke was. They didn't know how to precisely write the joke. So they keep wandering around, identifying where the joke is. Wow, that's paramount. That's a big place to begin. So that's what you're going to learn here. We're going to actually do it right now. Emma Willman, she did private with me and listen to this joke. I've got ADHD. I was diagnosed in high school and I was prescribed Adderall, which was a godsend because my grades were able to skyrocket because I could finally focus on trading my Adderall for the test answers. <laughs> So let's identify this joke. My grades skyrocketed because I could focus on trading my Adderall for the test answers. What was the one thing with two meanings? It's what she could focus on. We expected her to say I could focus on my studying. Mm, no, no, she traded drugs for the cheat sheets. Now you understand how that joke works. That's a great joke crisp, clear, but it's also about her as well. Very important to do that. Next is Anthony Jeselnik, one of my students as well. Okay, so here we go, Anthony. My brother's crazy. Even my neighbors hate him. The other day I opened up the door, I caught him masturbating. He looks me right in the eyes and goes, shut the door. <laughs> I said, get inside. <laughs> Okay, so let's identify Anthony's joke. He said, shut the door. I said, get inside. What's the one thing with two meanings? Oh, you might be thinking it's the door. It's kind of it, but it's really where the brother was at while he was masturbating. We assumed because of the door that it was his bedroom, the bedroom door. Instead, it was probably the front door because he was outside where the, the neighbors could see him. Understand why they hate him. There's the structure of this joke. And Anthony was one of my students. He really got joke structure from it. He understands joke structure. That's why his jokes are so good. The next thing you'll learn is how to fix jokes. I'm actually gonna show you how to fix a joke, how to edit one. Here's the joke. I just went through a long and messy separation, which ended with a divorce from my wife. So after all that, I went on a vacation to Denmark because I was going to have a sex change. The sex change was from not very often to nothing at all, not my gender little overwritten. Let's fix this joke. So the first thing you need to do is identify the joke. What's the structure of this joke? What's the one thing with two meanings? Sex change. Because the expected meaning, we expect him to say a change in sex organs and it would be in a change in sexual frequency. Sex change. Oh, now you're starting to understand. This is amazing because I love the teaching this to people. <clears throat> Man, is nothing more fun than that, watching people really start to understand jokes for the first time in their lives, and they wanna be funny people like you. For fixing jokes, I love what Patton Oswalt said. He said, in stand-up comedy, you strip out everything except what serves the joke. Now, I just showed you what serves the joke. That's what serves the joke. The least amount for the setup to say that you got a sex change, and the least amount you need to say in the unexpected interpretation about it was a change in frequency. Now, let's start to take it apart. 
to it sentence by sentence. I just went through a long and messy separation, which ended in a divorce from my wife. Okay, do I really need to know it was long and messy to, for the joke to work and, and that it was a separation and stuff? Well, no, all that's there because it's a divorce, which ended in a divorce. Well, that kind of all you have to do is kind of say divorce. And do you need to say from my wife? Well, if you're a straight man saying the joke, no. If you're other than that, you may need to explain things. But for this joke, this was written by a straight gentleman. So I know that that's what it is. So what do we need from this particular first sentence? Divorce. That's it. But you can't get out there and just go, divorce! All right. So have to kind of take some of the language there and change it, say, after my divorce. After all that, we can pretty much probably get rid of that. I, I went on a vacation to Denmark because I was going to have a sex change. Do I need to know you went on a vacation? And did I need to know it was after that? I mean, pretty much just the fact that in tense, uh, how this is written, that you know that it was afterwards. It wasn't before. I don't need to know you went on a vacation. You're right. It's called rationalization. You're rationalizing why you did that. And I want to take all rationalizations out. You don't need them because they don't serve the joke. Don't serve the joke. Take it out. So let's look at it. We don't need any of this. <laughs> After all that, no, you know, after my divorce, you know, I went through all that you know, sex change because in the next sentence, I've got the sex change. All that's gone. The sex change was from not very often to nothing at all. So let's kind of just get rid of that. I had a sex change. Make it nice and simple. I had a sex change. Was from, or there's some bad English. Get rid of the was. And also, not my gender. That's the joke. You don't want to tell them the punchline. You don't have to explain it. The point was is that it wasn't a sex change in organs. It was a sex change in frequency. Don't don't repeat the target, the expected meaning at the end of your punchline. That just doesn't make any sense. Let's kind of clean up the rest of this that can make it just a little shorter. I had a sex change from very seldom to not at all. Just shortened a few little phrases there. After my divorce, I had a sex change from very seldom to not at all. Wow. That is now a tight joke. And it doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it in the middle of a story. You can do it as a one-liner. Any place you're doing stand-up comedy, even if you're doing commentary on uh, genders and pronouns and stuff, you could still do this joke very cleanly and easily. Long setup, long, and then we just end up with this. Fixed a joke. It's about knowledge. I, I did a video one time. It's called Why Are uh, Open Micers Not Funny? And my answer wasn't uh, that they're, they're untalented. I, I basically said they're talented. They're committed. They're into it. They're funny, all the things they need. It's all there, except knowledge. That was the point of that. They're excellent at what they do and they would get there faster with the proper knowledge, with the proper information of practicing the fundamentals, which is what this class is about. The next thing is writing jokes. Oh, are we gonna write jokes? Well, we're gonna come close to it. Not perfectly and completely, but I had to develop an original joke writing system because the other one that I went through, the two list system is very inexplicit. In other words, if you knew how to write jokes, it helped you write jokes. If you didn't know how to write jokes, it was nothing. And that wasn't good enough for me. That's why I started this. So I ended up, uh, it took me many, many years. That was probably 20. Five. Now I have four different joke writing systems, but this one in particular, one teaches you how to write a one-liner and I teach it in this class. And I'm gonna go over it. Developing a writing system. It's called the joke prospector. There's two parts where you go from topic to setups. And then part two, which is called the joke mine, is from setup to writing punches. Here we go. This is what we're gonna do now is that just the second part, the joke mine of writing jokes from setup to writing punches. Over here are the three mechanisms, but I'm just gonna talk you through the steps of this system. Them. The first step, have a setup. The next step is to say, what's the primary assumption that people make about this joke? What's the expected meaning of this? Expected meaning is that you took him out to dinner. There could be others. That's the one we're going to work on here. Then you have to go, okay, what in the setup caused me to make that assumption? What's the one thing with two meanings? Oh, it's took out. Shortcut. Took my father out, really, but we're going to shortcut it and say took out. Let's write down some unexpected meanings. Kill. For Father's Day, I took my father out. But you now you gotta write a punch. For Father's Day, I took my father out with a 45 automatic. Why is this called a joke mine? Because if we move forward in this and we choose a different meaning, unexpected meaning hit, we can write a different punch for that, which is for Father's Day, I took my father out with a right cross. Oh, let's keep going. You removed him from something. For Father's Day, I took my father out of an urn. Let's keep pushing it. This is a mine. Every shaft you go down to, it's it branches off. It's really fun and amazing. Date. <laughs>
Yeah, we can get sick here. For Father's Day, I took my father out. The goodnight kiss was awkward. It goes further. We could back up and say, oh, what's another expected meaning? Expected meaning of father is really the man who raised you or your biological father. What's another unexpected of meaning of father? Priest. I didn't like the way he did mass. Once you understand these mechanisms, it's easy to write jokes. The hard part is writing those jokes that reveal something about you that's hilarious and about human beings that is hilarious. You're gonna write a lot of okay jokes. It's finding those great jokes. Those are the ones you're looking for. And so you just gotta write a great deal of jokes for a long time and then you'll really learn how to do it. But now I can just teach you. Developing the fundamentals modeling the basics. In other words, how do I go about finding those basics and where are they and what are they? It took a lot of years, but it was the fun part. Here's what I developed was a model for this was I identify a technique that had a name. Sometimes it didn't have a name. I go, oh, that's that technique. Then from there, I'd have to create an exercise, a practice exercise, so you could learn it. Not just learn the name of it or what it did, but to actually get it in your neurology by, by practicing it, being able to actually do it. It's like the difference between knowing what riding a unicycle is and being able to ride a unicycle. You needed to practice. And then once you did that exercise a whole bunch, you then develop that technique as a skill, which is something you can do. Now you can go out and practice and you can also apply it to your sense of humor. Not my sense of humor, to your sense of humor, your way of doing it. I want you to experiment with these techniques and do something with it I never thought of. That's my favorite thing is watch a student have ideas beyond mine. Give them the technique. They got so good at it, they thought other, found other ways of working with it. Fantastic. Let's talk about telling funny stories because most people come to me, I want to tell funny stories. I get it. I understand. You do. I did too. Everybody does. And they go, why are you teaching me one-liners in the beginning? Because if you can't understand the joke structure of a one-liner, you're never going to get it when you start putting it into a story. Story is far more complex. One-liners are only one of the many ways to communicate funny. Storytelling is far more complex as there are more techniques used to get the laughs. You gotta set up situations. There's situations in, you know, in those things. You gotta portray the characters. You gotta play portray all the roles, not just yours. You gotta play all the roles. You gotta write jokes for the scenes and for the characters. It's gotta come from their point of view. It's different staging those act out. You see people stage the scene all the time and screw up the comedy and sometimes just you can't even follow the story. A lot of technique behind that. And performing it all yourself. This is a lot. It's a lot more. So we take you step by step and teach you the fundamentals. Learn what a joke is and how to write a few jokes. And then we start showing you how to build a funny story. Here is my wife, Gayla Johnson. This is one of her, her this from her Showtime special. I'll just let you watch it and then we'll talk about it. Find something nice to say when you're going to compliment a woman you know you say oh hi you're a nice looking young lady I'm, you look very nice tonight very neat don't come up to me like i like your tits <laughs> i'm so glad hey you know what if you're really that fond of them and you want to take one with you <laughs> it's cool i can get another one that's fine you know You should take it and, and kiss on it and have fun and <laughs> the falsies routine. Yeah, that came about because uh I was at a club just performing and a guy came up to me and actually asked me, like, you know, like you got some nice, you know, get a nice rack. And so I, I just kind of responded in the moment, like, okay, you, you want to take it with you? And just sort of handed him like a falsy. Um, uh, it just grew into a routine after that. Uh, it got some laughs and I just did Greg's rehearsal technique and did his character and found out what he would say and did my character, found out how I would respond and it just kind of get adding jokes and adding jokes until it became that whole routine. <laughs> What I love most about that piece is the whole front row buckling forward with laughter during that last section. That's fun. It starts out, like she said, a very simple idea. It's like adding clothes on a clothes rack. She may have had one joke on there, but it really what it's about is you just keep adding jokes to that clothes rack. Pretty soon you have the story. 
that's got tons of jokes in it. It's not written, it's developed over time. And the more you work on it, the more you find those jokes. Next, assembling a routine. There are techniques for this as well. You get a bunch of jokes. First thing you have to do is learn how to rate your jokes. Learn your ABC. Your uh, A jokes get the biggest laughs. The B jokes get strong laughs. The C jokes are your uh, weakest or just good laughs. Okay, does that make sense? So once you get that, then you've got to learn your BCAs. You start with your B material. You open with it. So it's strong, but not your best stuff. You put your C material in the middle and then you close with your A material, B, C, A. I just worked with a whole bunch of my students last week because uh, we we're going to go to the improv this uh, weekend and perform. They were like, oh, uh, the show is uneven. That's right. And I pointed out, oh, it's funnier here than there. You want to end with your funniest stuff? Go back, rearrange it. And they did. I rearranged it, B, C, A, and the show flowed so much better. Next is managing stage fright. Huge. Stand up is terrifying. Everybody who's done stand up knows it's terrifying your heart pounding the gut thing but the difference is that you're gonna let fear win and what i find is that when you let fear win you just get good at letting fear win if you don't let fear win you get better and better at not letting fear win and it's not as hard it really isn't as time goes on it's better with the stage fright the butterflies may never go away but with a bunch of practice you may be able to train them to fly in formation they're all excited and going toward being funny rather than all over the place overcoming the fear of the unknown unknown is huge huge how do we face that we do that a couple of ways one is repeated in class performances seeing other people perform you getting up and performing over and over and over again and sitting in and the uh, level one people in live classes and the other classes you're welcome to sit in the uh level two classes for free. We just allow people to do that. So you can get two classes for the price of one. You don't perform in level two, but you get to sit there and watch it and watch how I work with people. Defeat the fear of feeling unprepared. If you're feeling unprepared, fear is overwhelming. But when you're feeling prepared and you got repeated evidence that it works, this goes a long ways. Build a killer routine and you start to get confidence in that. We also have a free supportive open mic online. It's on Zoom, but you can come in and do that as well. All these things we keep offering to help you along that path because we understand the path. If you're an aspiring comedian, you really want to go out there and do this, the tools are here. All of this gives you the courage to get on stage. We're here. We understand the path. Performing with confidence. Isn't that what you want? Be able to get up there and like, oh, oh I don't care. I know what I'm doing. That's the point at which this becomes just a huge blast. You'll still be scared in the beginning, but my, I tell you what, a lot of it goes away. Especially when you get on stage, you got to deal with the stage fright before you get on stage. Once you're on stage, it just goes away. It's like magic. It's the weirdest thing in the world. Performing with confidence. Understanding. This is what does it. Understanding how jokes work. You know it's a joke. I can't guarantee anybody's going to laugh at it. But when you when you get on stage with your show, what I can guarantee is what you're going on stage is with jokes. They will be jokes because we understand joke structure. Go and watch the open mics. Most of the people up there, what they're saying, in my opinion, when I go and see them, they're not jokes and they're not getting laughs. Uh, learning five ways to generate material. Writing is only one way. Like I said before, it's developed in storytelling and rehearsals and all kinds of ways. Uh, ranting. All these ways are ways of generating material. Five ways of generating material. You'll learn in this class. Practice the performing techniques. We're going to get you to be up and practice them every single week. You're going to be up on stage going through stuff, okay? And they're going to be exercises for the different techniques until the last two weeks. Have a routine that's five plus laughs per minute because that's what I'm asking you to do. Oh, and they're actually jokes. Mmm, powerful. You know you can get laughs. Isn't that what it's about? At the end of my, my, my classes, I usually say, hey, everybody, do you feel like you can now after this class and you've been through all this, you feel like you can really do that? And they're all like, yes, I really, I can get those laughs. I, I can see it. And are they great at everything? No, not yet. You're just learning a whole bunch of skills. That's not the point. The point is to know what they are and to work on them and to have them. This is Richard Villa. He's all over Southern California, but he's also one of the most popular comedians in, in Mexico and Latin America in general. Hey guys, it's Richard Villa. I've been doing comedy for 13 years. And my eyes opened up when I met Greg Dean and his method of teaching comedy and comedy writing. You know, after 13 13 years, you learn a lot, but there's so many things that I'm missing. I never knew the fundamentals. I didn't know, I never knew the basics. And once I started implementing his formula on how to write jokes, how to structure them, 
It's really helped me a lot. I've now worked with Rob Schneider's new show, Real Rob. I've gone internationally. I've been working now doing stand-up in Mexico. And that's amazing because the system works regardless of what language you talk because we're talking funny and funny is funny. Yeah, Richard came to me originally for a private session and he learned so much. He said, what should I do? And I said, well, take my level one class. And he went, well, I've been doing this 13 years. And I went, you have to trust me. After every class, every single class in this level one came to me and said, where were you 13? years ago. Oh my gosh. Some of these things I'm realizing I do, but didn't even know I did them. And now I can do them whenever I want to do them. Oh my goodness sakes. The next thing is there is work out there. First, the four C's. The four C's are clubs, colleges, cruise ships, and corporations. Clubs are where you'll get your first work. Then he's going to work toward colleges and yeah, a little harder these days with everything being so I'm offended kind of stuff. Cruise ships are great, but you got to have a lot of material and corporations it's got to be squeaky clean, but you can make thousands. I've got many friends of mine that make like $15,000 for 45 minutes work. And I am not kidding. And some, and they work all the time doing corporate stuff. And I trained them. They're not just people that I know. They are my former students. In Hollywood, there's all these things. There's comedy special, talk shows. Talk shows are all comedians now. Okay, sitcoms. Sitcoms are based around a lot of them around comedians or have comedians in them. What most people don't know is most of the writers are former comedians and executive producers and stuff are former stand-up comedians. And the warm-ups too. Sketch shows, same thing. You know, host, appearances, writers, warm-up. I mean, it, once they learn that you know how to write jokes, write good, tight, well put put together jokes and you can come up with them regularly, there's a place and there's places to get work in this town. Game shows, that's a new one now. They, they had to replace the older the older guard that was passing away and they got comedians. Before that, a lot of my comedian friends were actually auditioning for these shows. So the writers for them and warm up for them. Movies, acting roles, writers, directors, Judd Apatow. Go through the list of great comedians that have done them. Tim Allen, whom I know. All these people have taken stand up and turned them into these lucrative Hollywood careers. So so there's work out there for people that can get up and make a group of people laugh and know how to write jokes, how to become a comedian. Well, look at all of these people. Three or four or five of them are my students. Several of them are just my friends. A bunch of them I just know and a bunch of them I don't know. But here's what you need to know. Whoever your favorite comedian is, at the beginning of their career, they were you. There were someone with a normal job that wanted to become a comedian. They were an aspiring comedian just like you, I guarantee it. Talk to every one of them and go, yeah, I started out this. I was working at a bank. I was doing this. I was parking cars. They're no different than you. So I'm saying this, they just got dedicated and stayed at it for years and didn't get discouraged. Just kept at it and kept at it. Some of them got really famous and some of them made a good living. That's the part of the breaks. Everybody doesn't get super famous. Imagine taking your first step to turning your dreams into reality. That is this class. Level one, how to write a routine. That is this class. That's what it's built for. 40 years of experience in building all of these skills and techniques and principles that you'll follow as well in order to get you there. There's a path. If you want to get out there and share the laughter, class one, you'll learn to write jokes. Class two, you'll be telling funny stories. Class three, you'll start writing a routine. Class four, you'll practice your routine. And by class five, you'll have a completed routine. It's a step-by-step -step process. Of course, it varies by how much people put in their time and effort, but the people who put in the time and effort get huge results from this class. Every time I go to a club, I see four or five of my students performing or there or hanging out or about to perform. Every club in Southern California, I can never go to a club without Southern California, and some of them are very famous. You can learn in five weeks what would take you five weeks years. Five weeks or five years. It's a pretty good deal. Okay, some bonuses with this whole thing. There's a bunch of things that you get. There's a free PDF workbook for your assignment. There's Slack support and phone support. I have everybody on Slack and stuff and I answer their questions. Oh, they can get a hold of me on it. I'm there for you. Next is you can make up classes because we have video backups of these classes. I always teach the same thing each week, the, the same curriculum. Or if you just want to review it, we just automatically send you that review class. Automatically, it's part of the whole service that we give people. Direct message 
question, that's a Slack and you can direct that message me and everybody else in the class. A bunch of my students get together on Slack and they go to uh, shows and open mics together and support groups and writing groups because we're building a community here for you. You can sit in for free on my level two advanced class. Sit in for free. Again, you're not going to perform, but if you learn how to do it right, you can start giving feedback, solution feedback, pitching jokes, learning how to do that powerful because once other comedians find out you know how to pitch jokes and help them with their shows they'll want you in their writing group i get a lot of people building writing groups and a 15 minute if you wanted a 15 minute consultation with me all these things are free they come as part of the price of this whole thing here's what you need to do here's the rocking chair test when you say to yourself when i was young i'm sure glad i gave up on my dreams i was right not to spend a few bucks that might have changed my life i'm sitting here old and i'm glad i did that if that's the test if that's what you're doing is going yeah when i'm older i'm glad i didn't do this then don't do it but if you think you're going to have regrets then take this step because it is a step-by-step -step something you can do that anybody can do you can learn and you can get on the path to making your dreams come true learn to share the laughter it's in person in santa monica it's on zoom live classes taught by my wife gala the price is 2.99 five weeks to your dreams seating is limited we do fill up i don't take everybody we fill up and we fill up quite often and fight very fairly quickly get in there and get this class if this is what you want to do or join with us all you got to do is go to up in the right hand corner of this video is that i that'll lead you to standupcomedy.com or go on your browser and go to standupcomedy.com or the link is in the description below to get to standupcomedy.com that's my website or just sit there in your rocking chair until you're 60 or 70 or 80. It's your choice and it is a choice. And there's always something that's gonna get in the way. Do you want stuff to get in the way until you're old and in your rocking chair? You're gonna get out of that rocking chair and take some action. Thank you for signing up and uh, checking out this level one webinar. I hope to see you in class. And remember, laughter is contagious. Pass it on.